The battle to retake Port Patterson is about to begin. Our scattered forces have come together for this battle. They're few in number, but we've managed to assemble a small ground force. However, the Laysath fleet continues to gather in Port Patterson, and the presence of the Transportation Corps has also been confirmed. Having lost Puna base, it appears Laysath now intends to shuttle in troops and supplies overseas. If any more ships dock at Port Patterson, enemy strength will become more than our ground troops can handle. In order to prevent this, we need you to launch a preliminary strike on Port Patterson. Destroy all enemy supply vessels, landing ships, and freighters. In particular, try to keep as many enemy landing ships from entering the port as possible. Battle supplies must not reach the enemy. The number of enemy landing ships inside the port will be displayed on the MPG in the upper right hand corner of your HUD. If the MPG reaches the max level, our forces will no longer be able to retake Port Patterson. This time, a substantial enemy counterattack is to be expected. It seems the loss of Funa base has put them on guard. Please be careful. Quintus One, you are cleared for takeoff. Griffith One, altitude restrictions cancelled. Return to your mission. Good luck. Clock to Griffith One. Check your MPG on the right side of the hut. The MPG will display the number of landing ships from the port. Please pay careful attention to the MPG during this mission. Yo, so you're Griffith One, huh? I'm Major Berkman, Ground Force Commander. There are many ships with the enemy fleet. We'll lose the battle if a battalion is allowed to make it ashore. Do not allow more than three landing ships to enter the port. We'll be risking our necks out here with you. Let's take back Port Patterson.
We've succeeded in destroying the enemy fleet gathered in Fort Patterson. Our ground troops scored a major victory by using the chaos caused by our attack to storm in and secure the port. We freed Port Patterson from the hands of the enemy. It's still kind of hard to believe. The emblem of the Southern Cross. It was on that very day that the aircraft bearing the mark of the Southern Hemisphere brought about the defeat of Laysath forces. But the story barely made the news, and the army showed no apparent reaction. Almost nightly, Laysath's commanding officer, Diego Gaspar Navarro, plays host to grand banquets within Gaius Tower. This evening, he is once again proudly trumpeting the glory of his airborne fortress. I've heard the speech so many times, it feels like I wrote it. Which, in a way, is a good thing, because it lets me concentrate on enjoying the food instead. As I gazed out the window at the night sky, I felt as if even the phases of the moon were somehow at odds with those of the Northern Hemisphere. The words of a fellow reporter, who fancied himself a connoisseur of fine wine, really got me thinking about the price of the glass of wine in my hand. One glass of it is roughly equivalent to several years of a Laysathian citizen's salary. Haven't the long years of civil war left Laysath an impoverished and war-torn nation? Whatever the case, much is unclear about the flow of money in Laysath. Ever since I arrived here, I've only covered stories the military had approved. However, this particular mystery just might be worth investigating on my own. The idea was nothing more than the product of an idle mind. At least at the time. Uh, okay, let's get started with a report of the situation. I think our best option under the circumstances would be to head towards Santa Elva. Santa Elva is a strategic location that we have to pass through to get to the capital, Griswold. However, there are several other strategic points on the way to Santa Elva. Which points you choose and in what order you do so is up to you. It looks like your decisions will affect the course of this battle. I know it's an immense responsibility, but there's no one else to count on. We're relying on you to get us through this. It appears that the enemy's Miller unit is gathering at Kings Hill. It looks like they're trying to take back Port Patterson. I wonder what they're up to. Next, we have reports that the Allied Davis unit is cut off at Stand Canyon. Gleipnir took off from Puna Base and is currently standing by at Terminus Island. With the long strike range of the Gleipnir, there's not much our forces can do. It appears that the enemy is moving towards Stan Canyon to eliminate our remaining forces. We'll need those remaining forces in our attack on Santa Elva, so I think we should probably send help. If left alone, uh, they'll be helpless against the aerial fortress. Just like what happened to us at Cape Aubrey. Also, Santa Elva is a key location for the enemy, and I think they'll concentrate their forces there. We'll have major problems if they send in their aerial fortress. I'll give you more details once you decide on a route. Please tell me which route you plan to take. 